Welcome to your fifth of five training sessions for group leaders and those who are preparing or aspiring to become group leaders. Well done making it this far. Our last topic is outreach. We want all groups to have a part in outreach here at the church. We want to see them uh, excited about growing their group so as to one day multiply their group so that over time we have groups in each and every neighborhood throughout the city. So outreach is the process of doing that. We want to talk through the details of the how-tos of outreach. For many, outreach or talking to people about the reality of who Christ is and what he's done for us feels like it's outside of our comfort zones. It makes many of us nervous. I've been doing it for a long time and it still makes me a little bit nervous when I know I'm going to try to share the gospel with someone. Uh, but our desire is not just to share the gospel, but also to demonstrate the love of the gospel. We want to see Christ's love on display through our actions and our words. Both pieces are really important. And in group life, we have the opportunity to do both. Oftentimes we can invite people to our group when we're doing cookouts or events or opportunities to be out in the city doing things where they can see us loving the Lord and loving one another. And then they start asking the question, what is different about these people? Leading us to opportunities to share the words of how Christ has changed our life and the opportunity that they have for Christ to change their life. Often in groups, we have this tendency to kind of focus more on what we're comfortable with. If we've had maybe three, four, five, six couples have been meeting together for a long time, it's really easy for comfort to become a barrier to outreach. There's almost a nervousness of bringing someone else new into the group and bringing someone else new in. That means that our, our environment, our relationships might alter or change just a little bit and feel a little uncomfortable perhaps for a while. What I have found over time where groups tend to like settle in and kind of close their groups off, over time those groups begin to fall off of mission. They stop focusing on the people who aren't coming to the group and they only focus on the people in the group. Uh, the reality is, is that comfort is helpful for us going deep, but we can also be transitioning into new relationships, bringing new people into our group and continue to work towards growing deeper together. Oftentimes it's that new relationship or those new interactions with someone that draws out parts of who we are that we were unaware of. It allows us to become aware not just of aspects of who we are, but areas where we struggle, areas where we have giftedness. And we want to know all those aspects of who we are and with the other people in the group to know all those aspects of who they are. That's where growth starts to happen. All relationships are in transition, all of them. So inviting transition into your group is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. Jesus always makes room for us as people come to know him as Lord and Savior. He never has someone come to the the doors of heaven and says, sorry, there's no room left. How sad would it be for people to come to our groups and for us to look at them and say, there is no room for you here in our group. In the same way Jesus makes room, we want to be a place that makes room for people. There may be seasons when maybe there's a couple that's really struggling or a marriage that's on the rocks or a person going through an extremely difficult circumstance where we would maybe circle the wagons and close the group for a little bit just to help that group get healthy. But for the most part, we want groups to be ready and willing with open arms to invite new people into their group. As that happens, one thing becomes a discussion point, is what do we do as groups begin to get a little bit too large? And the answer to that is multiplication. That's something we're going to cover at the end of this training session. Let's talk about some of the details of how to actually do outreach as a group. We want outreach to be part of the DNA of a group. So I would do multiple things as a group to remind yourselves of the importance of outreach. One thing that I've done in the past has been really helpful is within a group is we always have an open chair. And we pray that God would fill that open chair with someone new. It's just kind of this constant visual reminder of God desiring to grow our group. Another thing is we'll have everyone pick two names and write them on a bookmark, put them in the Bible or on their phone, just write them somewhere we all remember to be praying for two people in mind that we're talking to who we have relationships with to begin to joining to begin joining our group to begin coming to some of our socials so that's another piece of making outreach real another thing would be being intentional with what we do as a group i would suggest using basic rhythms that already exist within life and within our culture within life we all are eating food so a great opportunity would be to throw a barbecue, throw a cookout, uh, invite people over for a big pancake breakfast, and just provide as a group something for the neighborhood, for friends and acquaintances and coworkers, and just invite people to come together and hang out. Just 
having people watch you love one another as brothers and sisters in Christ is a great stepping stone for getting into conversations about Christ. So you just want people to come and hang with you. There's also things that naturally happen within our culture. Holidays, Thanksgiving dinners, Labor Day cookouts, Memorial Days. So it would be a great opportunity to use those things to get people together to grow your group and get more people involved with your relationships. Uh, another piece that we have here that's not unique to West Virginia, but our Mountaineers, like most people love their Mountaineers. So if there's a big game, whether it's basketball or football, invite people over to hang out, eat wings, eat pizza, uh, do something and watch the game together. That's another opportunity for us just to use rhythms that already exist within our culture, take advantage of those to build our group and to meet more people. Michelle Thompson is also providing more and more opportunities for us as groups to go and meet needs within the city. So you're going to see January 2019 on one of the walls downstairs, we're going to have an area set aside just for city ministries where we'll have five different new opportunities every month coming at you that user group can grab one of those and choose to get involved with something going on in the city. So if you're having a hard time connecting with your neighbors or you're having a hard time thinking of ideas, we will have ample ideas for you to get more involved. So we have city opportunities as well as some of our big events like trunk or treats and uh, union mission when we pass out our food. Those are other great opportunities for your group to serve and be involved in outreach. For some groups, a difficult conversation is the conversation about multiplication. Uh, some groups have been the same number of couples for a long, long time, and they've just decided they are not going to ever multiply. Uh, over time, those groups will begin to stagnate, and they'll usually start to fall apart eventually because we're designed to be growing. We're designed to be seeing new couples come in, and when a group misses that opportunity, uh, they miss out on tons. Uh, when you have that younger couple or the younger individual come to your group, it might be younger in the faith, not necessarily younger in age, and for the first time they see beautiful things in God's Word, as those fireworks start to go off, the entire group enjoys that and experiences a level of satisfaction and excitement for seeing that individual growing in Christ. That's just God's design, is that we have younger believers with older believers in context with one another all the time. Our groups need to look like that. That's good and that's healthy for our groups. Uh, it allows us to have Paul and Timothy relationships. So when we start to collect ourselves into a group and we don't think about growing, those groups usually start to stagnate and stagnant things over time can start to stink. So we always want to be thinking about multiplication. How do we do it? We start by having it a part of our conversation from the beginning of our group. One of the first things we talk about is our desires to grow to one day to multiply. So how do we actually go through the process of multiplying? When the group gets big enough where one of a couple things happen. One, it doesn't fit in the house or location. Two, it's big enough that people just don't get a chance to share anymore. There's a limited number of people that have time to share, and the other ones just don't get a shot. Uh, so people aren't really getting to know each other deeply. That's another good sign. That's probably time to multiply. Or if there's someone in the group that just you can sense and they can sense they're designed to be leading a group and they're not, that's another good indication it's time to multiply. Multiplying can look like a couple different things. Uh, multiplication can look like a group kind of breaking up 50-50 and geographically going to two different locations where you're already meeting and then the other group going to another neighborhood. This going to another neighborhood is how we as a church begin to fulfill the Great Commission in Charleston. Lord willing that there's a day that we have groups in all the neighborhoods all around the city, eventually all around the valley. And when that happens, we're in a position to start sharing the gospel with all the neighborhoods, all the people in our city. This will take place through groups. Another way of multiplying might be just sending out four individuals, a new set of, of leaders who would probably meet with me at some point, along with another couple to support them, and launching a new group. In this idea of almost planting a new group, you create some more space in the existing group, as well as tons of space in this new group. This is a great way to multiply. So again, we can multiply by kind of changing into two geographical locations with uh, the existing set of leaders, the new set of leaders, or you almost can plant with a small group moving out to create a bunch of new space in a new group. Both of those are great ways to multiply. When we multiply, we have to recognize a couple things are happening. One is there will be a certain level of grief. Things are transitioning, which means that there's change. Whenever there's change, especially relational, there's a certain level of grief, and that's appropriate. In fact, we want to honor that and talk about that and be sad together. 
but it's grief for the sake of change and growth. So it ends with excitement. It doesn't stay in grief. It moves towards excitement, that God's doing something wonderful, that God's growing his church, that God's creating room for more people to come into community and experience what it's like to live life with brothers and sisters in Christ. So there's both taking place, uh, which means we should talk about both. Talk about the fact that it's going to be hard, but talk about the fact that it's going to be beautiful, that it is actually God's design that we continue to grow as a church as we see more people come to know him as Lord and Savior. So what a beautiful opportunity for that to happen through our groups, through your group. I want to make sure you know how thankful we are for you. The fact that you're leading a group means that you're on the front lines of our ministry. It doesn't mean you get attention every week. It doesn't mean you're on the platform all the time. But the fact that you're out there spending time with people who are just getting involved with our church or people who've been in our church for a period of time, you are really the one loving our people well. You're shepherding just like the pastors are trying to shepherd. So we are thankful for your commitment. We're thankful for your diligence. We're thankful for you being prayerful and in God's word and leading well. I want to be a part of your support system. I'm sure we already have spent time together, but I want to keep doing that. I want to help you. I want to dream with you. I want to pray things forward with you. I want to help strategize with you. So if at any point you need help or assistance, please feel free to contact me, get connected, and let's talk about the next steps. If you're a group leader who's finishing this up, uh, or desiring to be a group leader finishing this up, but you haven't actually started a group, let's talk. Let's talk about next steps for you to launching a group at some place in the city to get you going and have your group be successful. I'm excited for all that God has for you. So you've completed your five sessions. Um, please, what I want you to do is I want you to email me and let me know that you've completed them. I want to keep track of who's completed what, uh, and we'll continue to move on and grow and train our leaders. Again, thank you for your involvement. Thank you for making it through all five sessions.